All right, we have uh, one more reading and then we actually have a, a performance. Um, the next reading is uh, by Carmen Guerrero Napil. It's entitled, Where's the Fetis? Um, she's not here today, um, but I'm gonna read a little bit about Carmen. And it's actually, the reading's gonna be narrated by Jolman Tolentino, um, who is here. And in fact, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Jolman in a second. Uh, Carmen Guerrero Napil is a journalist, author, and public servant who was born in Ermita in Old Manila. Over an incredible span of 60 years between 1946 and 2006, she worked in various capacities for the Evening News, the Philippine Herald, the Manila Chronicle, the Manila Times, Asia Magazine, and Malaya. She has written 10 books, including A Question of Identity and The Philippines and the Filipinos. As a public servant, Ms. Nakbil was chairperson of the National Historical Commission during the 1960s and of the Manila Historical Commission in the 1990s. In 1983, she was elected to the executive board of the UNESCO in Paris. Jolman Tolentino was mistakenly identified as a, a singer earlier, and I think we were trying to um, say that Dennis Sai was here, who is actually the singer. Um, I think I've seen or heard Jolman sing karaoke, and I, I don't think I would call him a singer. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to read his real biography. Jolman Arevalo Tolentino's community work in the Filipino diaspora spans 20 years. His work includes outreach, uh, program development, and social work positions with organizations such as the Filipino Intercollegiate Networking Dialogue, Archipelago, and the Filipino American Human Services Incorporated. He worked in the Philippines for Tagalog on site, a language and cultural immersion program, and Atika, a non-government organization that assists families of overseas workers. Jolman was a co-founder and director of Sumi Sibol, an organization that dedicated, is dedicated to developing leadership skills of Filipino-American high school students in New Jersey. He currently teaches liberation sociology at Guriqua College in Brooklyn. Please welcome Jolman Tolentino. Um, I wanted to thank Lori and Kevin for inviting me out, and um, I wanted to say that I'm also a proud son of New Jersey, so me, me and Pat go way back, way, way back. Um, but, um, I, I am the proud son of um, a charming man from Manila and a um, beautiful but painfully shy woman from Asbati, and I was born in the island. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, and I was fortunate to have them bring me back there every so often. And, and then during those trips, uh, eventually I went on my own. And, and I started to question, um, well, I guess the process of assimilation, I started to link it to colonization. And thinking about migration as laced with both dreams that my parents held and also forced choices. Right? And, um, I thought about what choices they had to make in order to leave home to create a home for me and my sister. And the question of home has always plagued me because um, unfortunately I've often found that we're not often reflected in the landscape of America and then to go in the Philippines we see things that are familiar but also foreign. And so I started to work with youth questioning well, where is home? Right? And um, I realized in that process where we seek it we find it with each other, and so I'm thankful to be here with you tonight and uh, to say that I find home with you. So the reading is Where's the Patis by Carmen Guerrero Nakpil. A, Fili a Filipino may denationalize himself, but not his stomach. He may travel over the seven seas and the five continents and the two hemispheres and lose the flavor of home and forget his identity and believe himself to be a citizen of the world. But he remains, gastronomically at least, <laughs> always a Filipino. For, no other, for if in no other way, the Filipino loves his country with his stomach. Consider the Pinoy abroad, sick with longing, decides to comb the strange city for a Chinese restaurant, the closest thing to his beloved gast gastronomic country, there, in the company of other Asian exiles, he will put his nose finally in a bowl of rice and find it more fragrant than an English rose garden, more exciting than a castle on the Rhine, and more delicious than pink champagne. Better than a Chinese restaurant is the kitchen of a Kababayan, where in a foreign city, a Pinoy searches every busy sidewalk, theater, and restaurant 
for the well-remembered golden future of a fellow Pinoy. But make no mistake, it is only because he is in desperate need of a Filipino meal, and like a homing pigeon, he phoned patis, garlic, balat ng lumpia, gabi leaves, and misuwa. When the Pinoy finally finds such a treasure house, he will have every meal with his kababayan. Forgotten are the bistros in the smart restaurants, the back of his hand to the Four Seasons in the Tour de Art. Ah, the regular orgies of cooking and eating that ensue. He may never have known this host before. In Manila, if he saw him again, they would hardly exchange two words. But here, in this odd barbarian land where people eat inedible things <laughs> and have never heard of patis, they are brothers forever. Thank you. <laughs>